Okay, it's rare that a game makes me furious, but here we are. I've been largely enjoying my trip through the Microid 12-in-1 pack, or as it should have been called, the M-Zone Studio Soli Lab pack. Yeah, it seems they made all of them, I just didn't notice it in the Haunted House Mysteries loading screen. Point is, this is a company that seemed to be getting steadily better, only to take a nosedive around the time they switched their engine. Haunted House Mysteries was meh, but this is just awful. Intriguing premise, interesting twist, absolutely garbage gameplay. But we'll get there, for now, the hidden object criteria. It's 50-50. Some of the screens offer believable levels of clutter, an ancient crate, an abandoned lab, a guard's desk covered with sweets. These make sense and are largely well-drawn. Then a number of nonsensically messy screens turn up and ruin the game's average. I know there's a big storm going on, but there's no excuse for the environs around the Statue of Liberty to be this messy. Also, the game strangely can't decide if it wants the screens to get progressively cleaner or not. A third of the screens stay tidy on multiple visits, but the rest don't. That kind of waffling is something I don't see often. Strictly 12-1 screens here. Clean up for no reason, then grab an item. Until, of course, you can't anymore because of some truly awful directions. Here's the part of the game that broke me. See those items at the bottom in blue? I spent 10 minutes trying to find them with no luck, and zero help from the hint button. That color change in the name is short form for they're behind something in every game. So I tried in vain to figure out how to lower the monitor over and over again before finally giving up. What did the game want me to do? Well, it turns out that I had some hologram revealing goggles I was supposed to click on. Not that there was any way of knowing that. Here's the information you get when you pick them up. Notice the complete lack of direction about using them in the hidden object scenes. But Hogaru, you might say, you're supposed to find holograms around the island with them. Wasn't that a clue? No, because I'd already used them to find holograms around the island outside of the hidden object scenes. And also the use them in object search mechanic is introduced in a scene set in Arizona which is as far from the island as you can get without leaving the lower 48. Right, the story. I forgot to talk about it. During a big storm, the Statue of Liberty's torch disappears, and the player controls an FBI agent dispatched to investigate. The investigation doesn't really make any sense, and the explanation is kind of endearingly daffy, but I'm not through complaining. So. The reveal holograms mechanic I mentioned a second ago, yeah, it immediately breaks right after it's introduced. Here's literally the next hidden object scene in the game. Note as I vainly click on the cactus over and over again without any luck. Turns out I was supposed to turn the goggles on and off again to force the items to disappear because this terrible game is badly programmed. As for the puzzles, they're mostly harmless, except for the one that had to be restarted because it was terribly fiddly, and the two with instructions so poorly explained I was forced to skip them. I was asked to find a sun. Do they want the picture of the smiling sun on the sunscreen bottle? No. Do they want the word sun directly over it? No. They want the barely visible sun etched into the side of the tree. There isn't one, so no. This is a terrible game that no one should play. The end. This review was based on a copy of the game purchased with my own money. If you'd like to watch the playthrough that led to this review, just click on the rectangle that allows you to do that. Spoiler alert, I yell a lot. You can find other hidden object game reviews elsewhere on this playlist. Au revoir.